Hello, this is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot with the final wrap-up of 2006. Today is December 31st, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the markets and see uh, what might be ahead for 2007. I've got the S&P 500 on the screen. The uh, spiders closed down 59 cents on Friday, and this market is starting to look really and act really tired. Um, we had the NASDAQ uh, just a couple of weeks back. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100 quickly. Um, first show signs of distribution when we saw that 10-day uh, moving average cross down through the 20-day moving average. Now, what I consider that to be is just a sign of distribution. And certainly since then, the market has been very choppy. So let's go ahead and take a look back at the S&P 500. We haven't seen that evidence there. However, what we're starting to see in here is possibly some lower highs. And if we take out the lows from last week, near 140.75, the support level would be, we've been looking at um, as it was prior resistance as well. If it takes out that level, I think that the 50-day moving average, first of all, will definitely be tested. We've got this uh, uptrend line that's been holding, and it keeps that the tests are getting more frequent. A trend line like support or resistance, the more times that that area is tested, the more likely it is to fail as the source of supply, in this case, becomes stronger and finally breaks down through that level. So I think that we might be in for a little bit of further profit taking here early in the year, and then maybe some sideways action. Uh, tough to call for a top necessarily, but uh, you know we th this market has gotten quite extended to the upside, and it wouldn't be a surprise to see uh, some profit taking and, and pullback uh, in the new year. So if we take a look at this 50-day moving average as a target, we can also look at this most recent leg higher that began here on uh, November 28th or so up to this high. If we take that and use Fibonacci, you can see that a two-thirds retracement would also bring it down to that 140 level, which leads me to believe that that is a very good uh, short-term, more intermediate-term uh, target on the downside. So looking at the 10-minute time frame, you can see that we've had some resistance up in this uh, 142.75 level, and that area is going to be the more important level going forward, 142.70 really. Uh, but now we've got some potential most likely for some resistance at this prior little level of intraday support for them in the last three days at 142. So we've got resistance potentially at 142 and then I'd say 142.70 as far as support. Again, I think we have to look at the bigger picture here because we've got 140.75 then 140. So this big trend line is definitely in jeopardy I think and breaking that doesn't always, like I say, it doesn't necessarily signal the end of a trend, um, but what it does, or, or it doesn't necessarily single, si signal the a reversal, but what it does indicate is the rate of ascent is, is likely to slow and perhaps more likely some sideways uh, action is, is ahead for the market. But this, this trend line break, if it occurs, it's been a widely watched trend line and it's likely to get a lot, a lot of attention from uh, technical traders. So I think you'll see a lot of new money enter the market on the short side, which I don't think it's uh, a, a good idea except for maybe a short-term trade. Um, but those people, you know, we've still got a rising 50-day moving average. So it will be innocent till proven guilty, although it's more like the light going from green to yellow. And that's, again, what the NASDAQ has been indicating to us for the last few weeks as these moving averages crisscross. Now the thing in here is we've had, and this is kind of disturbing a little bit to me, is is that it can't get back up above that 50-day uh, moving average. Although the r direction of the 50-day moving average is rising, we've got a 10 and 20-day moving average which are both declining, which tells us it's just a very mixed picture in here and to take it slow. Now is not the time to be looking for the big home run trades. Instead, it's more switched to a shorter term time frame if you're a longer term investor and certainly if you've been riding this uh, big wave higher then you should be locking in some profits because we do have lower highs and lower lows in here now and this prior level of support this $43.30 level does appear to be acting as resistance as does the 10 day moving average so in uh, the 50 day moving average the 10 day intraday on Friday 
and on a closing basis it can't get back above that 50 day moving average now five days in a row and that's like I said a little bit of a disturbing sign even though we have the 50 day moving average heading higher officially I'm neutral on the NASDAQ and looking at the 30 minute time frame it looked like the market wanted to turn around on Friday uh, early on and then that move failed later in the day and I think that uh, that paves the way potentially for further selling early in the week so this 4340 level 4330 4340 um, is is definitely an area that we're going to have to keep a close eye on and then breaking back below 43 bucks a share then we could see a little bit further uh resumption to this to this uh sell off that we've seen and, and perhaps this is the more important level of support that we may come down and test so it's definitely a lot more cautious in here right now is the way to treat this this market the mid caps uh, mid caps have been showing lower highs in here and a little bit of lower lows. We've still got that rising 50-day moving average, but it's definitely not a runaway bull market in the mid-cap stocks. These stocks do look vulnerable. They uh, uh, look like th this level was tested in here at about 144 uh, and a half or so, 144.70, and maybe we're going to test that again. So it's definitely time to be a lot more cautious going forward. There's a lot of stocks that continue to break down hard. Some of the big leaders uh, are, are breaking down and not showing signs of recovering. So you, you want to definitely not be buying on weakness. Um, the semiconductors are in a downtrend. I mean, we've got all these moving averages heading lower, the 10, 20, and 50-day moving average all heading lower, and we've got a declining 200-day moving average as well. That's the over the intermediate term. The bigger term picture, we're still at locked in this range here with support down near about 32.75. Breaking below 32.75 could lead to a little bit of a panic in the semiconductors. This is the SMH that we're looking at. And uh, that's the wrap for the year.